use the following tools and materials to put this skirt together. I have a separate pattern tutorial for this skirt, so I'm going to be linking that in the description box down below. So please check that out if you haven't seen it already. I'll be using this green, yellow, brown and white print material that has this gorgeous sunflower print. And I got this material from Fabricland. I've already shown this in my previous video. I also got some black lining. I got a total of 3 meters for the print and 1 meter for the lining. I also got a short zip, green thread, some tape, some necessary pins, as well as interfacing, which I'll be using to stiffen the waistband of the skirt so it really stays nice and flat. So the first thing I'll be doing is to pin down my pattern and I actually took the advice of one of you guys. So I remember when I did the pattern tutorial for this, you guys said the pattern would not lay flat so i went back again and i looked at the pattern and i really tried to make it work but the thing did not just want to lay flat so i ended up cutting the pattern in two through the center front so this is the other part of the pattern and i just used one half of the pattern for this skirt so this for two reasons one the pattern did not lay flat and two the material is not wide enough to actually take the entire width of the skirt because you remember i have to also make the pattern longer because the pattern itself is not long enough to make a decent length of skirt so i ended up making the skirt about 17 inches long all the way around so that's from the center back all the way to the center front i ended up adding a little bit of seam allowance on the center front so i can sew these two pieces together to make one piece that would become the full box pleated circle skirt so I'm just going on in here to cut off the rest of the bits and as you can see, I've cut off my waistband as well. So the next thing that is really important is to sort of snip where your pleats are. So I do this because I just think it's a whole lot easier when it's time to actually make the pleats because with those notches, you are able to know what parts you need to pleat in or pleat out. So I'm also notching my seam allowance so I know exactly how much I need to sew out as well as my zip allowance on my center back. So this is my skirt piece cut out. So I have two pieces here, which I'm going to join together to make one full piece that would become the skirt. So I also cut my lining, which was about 16 inches short. I made this shorter later on, but that's the length. As for the width of the lining, it's twice my waist measurement. As you can see here, I've cut my waistband and I fused it with some interfacing to make it stiff and stable. Next up, we need to join the center front of the skirt. So I've pinned it together and I'm just going to be sewing it using a normal straight stitch on my domestic machine. And because my overlocker decided to die on me for the most random reason, I'm going ahead to do a zigzag stitch just to secure the seam as you can see here. So this is um, an alternative to overlocking. If you don't have an overlocker, you can do a zigzag stitch on your seam just to prevent it from unraveling. So now that I have one full piece for the skirt, it's time to actually make the pleats. So because I've created those tiny snips, I'm just going to look for them along the waist of the skirt and pleating both sides inwards because I want sort of like the hidden pleat for this skirt. You can pleat yours outwards, but I, I don't know. It's just my preference. I just thought this was much cooler and because it opens up outwards at the bottom, it just looked more flattering in, in my opinion. So I'm just going ahead to pin in all of the pleats all the way around. Like what I did in pattern tutorial, you find the middle of your pleat and then you fold each side of sort of the end and the beginning of that pleat to meet that middle point and just secure both folded ends with pins so they stay safe and secure until we're ready to fix either the waistband or the lining for this skirt <music> Once I'm done pinning 
all the pleats you can see the the waist is beginning to actually look like a box pleated skirt so i'm just going ahead to double check that the waist is actually still correct and it would still fit me because through plating you could take away measurements that you still need but after checking i was still good and i was still okay and because i added a little bit on the center back i knew i was fine in terms of fixing the zip so the next thing we need to fix is the waistband and i'm just folding it in half and i'm going to go ahead and give it a nice press so it's nice and clean around the folded edge so i'm going to find the middle of my waistband and match it to the middle of my skirt you know the middle of the skirt is that seam that we created earlier on so that was a really quick and easy way to find the middle of the waist of the skirt and i'm just going ahead to pin the the waist of the skirt or the waistline of the skirt to the to the raw edge of the waistband so i'm just doing it all the way around from one end to the other i love to work with pins i just find that it makes it easier for me to sew and i don't have to think a lot when it's time to actually take this piece to the machine but one thing that i want to do first is i want to fix my lining and i've gone ahead and i've gathered up my lining by sewing with a very loose stitch and then pulling the bobbing thread to create gathers so you can pleat your lining you can gather your lining you can cut your lining a line but i just thought the gathers was an easy and quick way to add fullness to the skirt so you can have fun with your lining if you want you don't even need to have a lining if you're in a very warm country but we're in england <laughs> whatever summer you need lining so i'm just going ahead to pin my lining in place i've pinned left and right hand side as you can see here and because i've gathered the waist it's easy to just sort of ease out the gathered or the rouged end of this lining to fit the entire length of the waist so you don't even need new pins all you really need to do is just um as you as you go along the way you take out your old pin or the pin that was there and you just use it to secure the lining in place because once you have these three layers you're automatically going to sandwich your waistband in the middle so when you turn the the lining inside out you don't even see a seam on the inside of the skirt so this is a very sort of smart way to finish off waist seams without thinking about overlocking afterwards so now that i've pinned the entire length of my lining i'm just double checking to see that there are no bubbles or puckering before going ahead to stitch on my machine so i'm just going in to show you guys what it actually looks like so you can see the waistband is in the middle the lining is on top and the actual skirt is the very last layer underneath so the pleats are still looking fine and i'm relatively happy with this now it's time to sew so this is the most important stitch for this skirt because you, ha you have to deal with the gathering of the lining and you have to deal with the pleats that you made on the skirt so because i care more about the pleats i am sewing on this side which is where the main body of the skirt is the waistband is in the middle and the lining is the last and third layer so as you sew along the way, make sure to check that nothing is cut where it's not supposed to be before finishing everything off nicely. So now I'm done sewing the entire waist of the skirt and as you can see, there's no seam along the entire waist of that skirt. And that just looks really nice, really clean and relatively professional might i add <laughs> so once i'm happy with the waistband of the skirt i'm going to go ahead and think about what i'm going to do on the center back if i want a zip or if i want a button but for this skirt i'm going to just stick with having a zip so i'm going to pin together the center back of the skirt i'm going to pin all the lining the actual skirt and just have everything nice and neat but before i stitch that up i went ahead to fold the the hem of the lining it doesn't really matter it's not really important but i just thought it looked nicer if the hem was finished beautifully before sewing the center back of the skirt where the zip is going to sit so what we're going to do next is we're going to sew from the bottom of the hem all the way to the marked point where you want your zip to finish so because i'm using a short zip it's relatively high up i'm going to sew this all the way to the hem and just um, secure it with a reverse stitch before fixing the zip on the center back the top half center back of the skirt 
So this is actually one of the zips I got from William G. I'm, I'm actually surprised I actually found use for those zips. But the way I'm going to fix this zip is I'm going to fold in, you know, that tape, excess tape that usually comes on top. I folded that inwards and I'm just pinning in my zip on the center back. The seam allowance on my center back was about two centimeters. You can make yours more, you can make yours less. I just like to leave a little bit more seam allowance on my center back. So if I want to open up the garments in the future, I know there is room to work with. So I'm just going in to pin off the rest of my zip. And as you can see, this is my normal method of fixing zip. Very quick, very easy. So all you have to do is literally just stitch the tape onto the, the relevant side. So I'm stitching on this side of the tape to this side of the skirt. And when you get to the end, make sure to do a reverse stitch to secure the zip in place. So I'm just going in to finish off the rest of this other side and because I'm stitching on both the lining and the actual skirt, the back of the skirt is going to be finished beautifully. So I'm just doing this extra step that is, like I said, extra. You don't have to do this. I'm using a one centimeter top stitch to hold that zip in place on the outside so it looks like an exposed zip. So when I get to this corner here, I'm going to turn towards the bottom. I, I rolled literally because it's a metal zip. I didn't want to break my needle. So I just rolled the needle, pushing, pushing the garment and the zip nice and slowly. And then when I get to the other side, pull up that zip, drop my footer and sew on that one centimeter seam allowance all the way till I get to the top of the waistband. Now this is what the zip looks like. It's just something extra I thought would make the finishing of the zip look nicer and I'd not, I have not really done anything like this before in the past so I thought it would be like the extra spice just to do in this tutorial. So on a normal day I would overlock that center back seam but my overlocker has just decided to go, to go to the other side. I don't know what happened. I need to get it fixed. Please, if you know anyone that can fix an overlocker, please let me know down below. But the last step for this skirt tutorial is to finish up the hem. I folded in the hem by 1.5 centimeters and just stitched that all the way around to just make the skirt look really nice and beautiful. So this is the finished skirt. The length is a little bit short for me, but we're coming up to spring summer. So I'm sure I would actually be able to wear the skirt in the future. I particularly like how I styled it. It's one of those fabrics that could really go grandma-esque and not look very nice, but I decided to play more with the yellow and the neutral tones. And I really, really like the finished outcome. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope you enjoyed this skirt tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love to know all of your comments and thoughts down below below and until my next video have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye